Hi and welcome, welcome friends of the IoT world. My name is Arni and today we will talk about Grafana in an OE dashboard. In my last video I showed you how to generate usable data for the industry via Node-RED and today I will use that data to build a fancy OEE production dashboard for operational visibility. My colleague Jeremy already did a detailed video on how to access the Grafana microservice running on the United Manufacturing Hub and how to configure the data sources in Grafana. So for everyone who doesn't know what is Grafana, here's a short summary. Grafana is originally an open source tool to monitor IT tools and software, like Salesforce, TripAdvisor or Citibank. But now Grafana is used more and more to monitor industrial equipment by graphically representing processes on the shop floor, for example by graphs, stats, timelines or process values. It provides an insight into the production and can also provide an insight into the condition of machines. The collected data can then be used for precise planning. For example, you're the production manager or line manager and with Grafana you can always have the necessary overview of your production and you can react quickly if problems arise. Grafana can help you to find answers on questions such as is every machine in my production lineup or running? Or what was the main cause of machine stoppages over the last month? Or maybe how fast was my average throughput for the last order? But before building an OE dashboard, let's take a step back and talk about how it's even possible to graphically display operational and machine data. As a precondition, a network and electrical connection is already set up and the United Manufacturing Hub stack is installed either on-premise, on-edge or in the cloud, or everything together in large deployments. But what is the United Manufacturing Hub again? It's an open source Helm chart for Kubernetes which combines state-of-the-art ITOT tools and technologies and brings them into the hands of engineers. By this, it is possible to calculate production KPIs in real time from the data in the database. The general approach in the United Manufacturing Hub is to first extract and process the data from the machines using Node-RED, Sensor Connect and so on, and then push it to MQTT, Kafka and the unified namespace. From there, the data is automatically written to a database like TimescaleDB and is then prepared for visualization. And between the database and Grafana are now two more elements. First, Factory Insight. Factory Insight awaits queries via REST API to then automatically extract and process the data from the database in the most performant way and calculates, among other things, values such as OEE. Second, UMH Data Source. The UMH data source is a plugin for Grafana that makes Factory Insight directly selectable in Grafana. By this, the data can now be visualized through Grafana and dashboards can be created very easily. Now back to the OEE dashboard. Which MVPs or panels should not be missing? To make the production more efficient, information is needed about the current status of the machine and the machine status over time. Their efficiency the products or parts the machine is producing and the duration and frequency of malfunctions. This information can be obtained from the panels I will select for the dashboard. But of course, there are many more options that can be decided individually depending on the case. If you have any questions about catching or processing the data, visit our Discord channel or feel free to contact us. So let's start with our first panel. Our first panel will be the current machine status. For this, Click Add Panel, Add a New Panel and then select STAT on the upper right corner. First we select the Query Parameter State and we should directly see the current machine status. If not, like in our case, check on the right side on the value option if the correct calculation, last, and the correct field like our query parameters is selected. So I will change it now and as you can see it changes to producing. The next step are about the visualization and are to be done individually by you according to your taste. This also changes from panel to panel. I will show you how we do it in the industry and what settings are made. So in general, I like it optically best if the background is set to transparent. Also, you need to rename the panel for a better structure. These steps are the same for every panel at the beginning. The next settings are set correctly for the panel by default and do not need to be changed. So press apply. The next panel will be the calculated overall equipment efficiency value. Therefore, we again add a panel and select STAT.
we select the query parameter OEE. And we will then see a number, but not as a percentage like we want. Change the title to OEE first and set the background to transparent. Again, first check for calculation. This time we need mean. And then check for the right field. It should be similar to the curve parameters. In stat styles, you can disable the graph mode. And under standard options, we can change the unit to percent. Finally, under thresholds, we can define the value from which the percentage is displayed in green. This can be configured individually. For this example, we simply take 0.7, so it's 70%. Again, press apply. The next panel is the order table. Therefore, select table and the value is order table. Now it's a mess and you need to do some changes. I will show you how to do it for the first column and then you will see the result for the rest. So change the title and make the background transparent. Then you can go to transform and add the transformation organize fields. Here you can hide unnecessary fields or rename the splits. In value mappings you can change the values you get from the database to names. For example, in our case, order ID 202020 will be order 1 and the product ID will be red band. So now the order ID and the product ID changed. To display the start time, not in milliseconds, because this is a timestamp, maybe you remember it from my last video about the structure of Node-RED, an override must be added. So add field override, then fields by name, select for example begin, add an override property, go to standard options unit and then select daytime ISO. And now you can see the begin time changed from a milliseconds to a real date on the real time. So do the same for end. And now also the end time changed. Next, you can change the time in milliseconds to minutes or hours by selecting the field and choosing the unit seconds. So in this case, for example, the target time per unit is in milliseconds and we wanted to have it in minutes or hours. So add field override, fields by name, then select target time per unit, add an override property and go to standard options unit and then to seconds. Now you can see you will have it in hours and minutes. Same you can do for the actual time per unit. Also with the override you can adjust the column width as you like. I will just leave it with the default settings. Afterwards click apply. The next panel will be the machine status over time. Therefore, again add a new panel, select discrete, and the value is state again. Now change the panel title to state history or whatever you like, and then set the background to transparent. Also, as you can see, the colors are not that nice. So for example, unknown stop is yellow and um, let's make it red to highlight it. Therefore, add current values into your color mapping and you can just change by clicking on the color you want to change and you can select a different color. So by this, now the unknown stop is red, for example, producing a screen and post-processing is orange. 
but you can change it to whatever you want. Again, click apply and there's the stage histogram. So now we came to our last two panels, the stop duration and the stop frequency. For the stop duration, we need a bar gauge. So first add a new panel and then select bar gauge. Change the title to stop duration and then make the background transparent again. The value is aggregated states and the value options needs to be all values. So now the stop duration is again in milliseconds and we need to change it. So go to standard options, unit and then seconds again. And we will have it in hours. Also you can change the decimals to for example one and I think it looks way better. Then you can unable the unfilled area and make the display mode to basic and we're done. Click apply and you will have the stop duration. The next one is the stop frequency. Again we need a bar gauge. We will change it to stop frequency and then make the background transparent. Select state histogram. All values again. Disable unfilled area. Make the display mode basic and again change the unit to seconds and decimals to one. So we're done. Here there's also a threshold basically or on default by 80. So I guess when it's over 80 milliseconds or something, it will um, be red. You can change that. I will leave it like this um, because then you can do it however you like it. Press apply and there are all our panels. So now at the end, we need to reorganize everything by drag and drop. So you can move the panels and resize them so that it looks nice. Here I'll put our logo to the top. And then start with the order I presented you in the beginning. So here we are. Now with a dashboard like this, you will have a nice overview of a specific machine. In my next video, I will integrate relevant energy consumption data from a machine into Grafana to show how it can be used for resource monitoring to improve sustainability and to enable an energy and resource efficient production. Thank you very much for your time. Always feel free to join our community on Discord. The link for our Discord channel is in the description. Because on our way to a digitized production, we are all united. See you in the next video.